Hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? This is Soleto coming at you from the wild, wild west. Today, I'm going to do a continuation of what I started yesterday, the video I made yesterday for y'all, on the Luzon, the Luzon set. I want to do a continuation. I want to <clears throat> also compare it to my other two sets of knives that are under $100 that, um, you have similar type handle materials and and uh, mid grade steels or lower grade steels or whatever you want to call them, and and just compare them and let you know what I think about them. You know where where this one stands compared to all of them because this these will be the last ones I have that have grivery handles or any kind of um, I don't know GFN or uh, Zytel or whatever Zyx type handles from cold steel all right here we go okay this one i think it's really cool because it's small and it's really light but because of how thin the blade stock is i don't know if it's really for me though but i do like it i, I do see the uses for it this is this would be a great knife for somebody that wants a nice small lightweight super inexpensive folder that is still strong and durable that's the way I would describe this one but the handle on it for me is a little bit too small and what I mean by small I mean the it's like too narrow and it doesn't have enough width and girth to it is that a good way to put, put it but I like the way it looks it's a beautiful looking little knife I think it's really cool looking and um, I don't know about I don't know about the steel. I've never experienced the steel before. But the grinds and everything on the blades and everything is really nice. Both of these Luzons are, are the construction quality of them is really nice. I think you're getting a really nice knife for for the price that you're paying for it. And I do like this liner lock lock. I think cold steel. I'd put this on the tie lights. This on a tie light would be awesome. Because then, then you have to worry about the liner lock folding back or, or coming back on you. I do love this idea. The, the liner lock lock. It's easy to use. not hard to use either. You can you do everything with one hand. There's a lock on. Lock's on. You can't unlock it now. You will not be able to unlock this. All it is is like a, it's like a metal wedge. I don't know, let me let me see if you can see this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a metal wedge that goes in between the the scale and the lock, and the, you know the torsion spring or torsion bar or torsion lock, whatever you want to call it, the, the stainless steel torsion lock. Now, I hope you were able to see that. I don't know if you're able to see it or not. But it's a, it's, it's a real simple idea. And it's, it's ingenious. <laughs> but you know so so is the so is the so is the um the triad lock the triad lock is a real simple type of lock too I don't know why nobody never thought of it before Andrew Demko's good at coming up with things that are pretty obvious that nobody has never done they actually work really well excellent idea they, they ought to put this on all liner locks. See I can't I can't unlock it. I'm trying my hardest to unlock it here. Let me un unlock it. Boom. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's just that this this knife the, the handle on it is just too small for me. I think it'd be great for somebody with small hands. Somebody has smaller hands or whatever. Maybe my hand my hands are like extra large hands so I wear extra large gloves and things like that, motorcycle gloves. So, uh, no, it doesn't work for me. This one, I love. <laughs> I love this one. This one is awesome. And I never thought I would like this knife. But just it's just sort of like, like for these, I like the big ones. And the same thing like for the, the tie lights, I like the big ones. You know, it's like, a, this one is, I think it's going to be the same way. I like the big ones. This might be the only small one I get. I may get another one of these big ones because I like this one. 
I want to try this one out in my EDC drawer for a while. I actually want to try using this in a... I don't have any experience with this steel. I want to use it until I get it dull and then I want to resharpen it and see how hard it is to resharpen and how well it takes a new edge. See if I can make the edge better than the original edge. This one yesterday when we tested it, the, the edge wasn't that well. One thing I noticed about it though is that I think they want you to use the sharpening choil. I mean the, the, the Ford choil on this. Because if you look at it, you can see it's dulled up right here. And that's where I always start cutting stuff when I'm testing an edge. Because I want to cut all along the edge. All along the edge. So I start right back here where the choil is and I cut all along. And maybe that's the reason why this one wasn't cutting. I got some more paper today. We're going to try it again today. But I, I just sort of noticed that. And this one is the same way. I can see where it's dulled right here. It's like maybe they, they don't want you... Because they, they know... They know Cold Steel knows that people are going to be manipulating the blades and testing them out and doing all sorts of stuff. They probably don't want you to get cut. That's how they used to do a lot of their old knives. I don't know if you ever noticed that. They would never do the, the troil right here. They always want to leave this first part of the, the knife kind of dull. And I think it's because so you can open and close it with one hand without cutting yourself. I think that's the real purpose, the reason why I need. A lot of people used to complain about that and want to make a big giant choil and stuff like that. I always left mine just up like it was because I, I sort of noticed that that when the blade folds over, here let me let me show you what I'm talking about. This one won't work. When the blade folds over, see how they, they leave you a big spot right here. That's for your thumb. Or your finger, not your thumb, but your your fingers. When it, when the when the blade folds over, you have something to stop the blade with, without cutting yourself. See what I'm talking about? That's the way. I, that's the way. That's the way you close these. If the if the blade came, if the edge came all the way back, you couldn't do this. See. And I think Cold Steel knows this. I think Andrew Dimko knows that. And he knows how people use these knives. And he knows how he probably uses the knives. And so I think that's the reason why they do that. And a lot of people complain about that because they want the edge to go all the way back. But see how they, this one's dulled? I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Where they have like a false chop, chop, oh, sharpening choil and it's dulled. It's because the edge comes back too far, so they doled it out, I think. Because they want you to get have a little bit of an area right here where you can stop the blade if you want to fold it with one hand. See? So you don't cut yourself. And you can handle it with one hand. See? That's what I think. I don't, know, I don't know if that's a true theory or not, or if that's just the way that the, the blades, they, they were able to manufacture them in the factory, or if they did that intentionally. I sort of think it's intentional because I've seen Andrew Dimko handle knives, and he handles knives a lot like I do, where he likes to handle it with one hand, and he likes to open and close things with one hand, and he sort of like, and he does that. I don't know if you've noticed that in the videos or whatever, he always does that. He doesn't use two hands. And so I think him as a designer, the blade designer, I don't know if he designed these or not, the Luzons. I don't know if that was him or Mike Wallace or somebody else. But it's a good it's a good possibility that he designed these too because he came up with a new locking system. So that's, that's a lot like Andrew Demko. And it's big like an Andrew Demko knife. <clears throat> but um, I know he designed these and that's the way these are. Okay, but anyway, let's get back to this. Let's let's check let's check out let's test out some of the um, the edges and stuff like that on these. Compare the edges and everything because you guys have seen these knives before in different videos. So I'm not gonna go into all the different specs and everything. I went to the specs on this yesterday. This is a 13 and a half inch knife. I think this was a nine inch, a five inch handle, four inch blade, and this one has a six inch blade. 
and a seven and something like a seven and a quarter inch or something like that, seven and a half inch handle. This one has a four inch blade. I think it's a five inch handle. I'm not, don't, don't, I won't swear to it, but I think it's like just like pretty much like this one, about a five inch handle, nine inches long. This one has a three and a half inch blade and a, and a shorter handle. I don't know exactly how long the handle is. I don't want to look it up right now, but uh, it has a four millimeter blade. This one has a six inch blade, and I can't remember how long the handle is, but this one's a, a real long handle. And this one has a 4.8 millimeter blade. Th these are the old versions. These right here are the original old versions. They're all in Oz 8. This is Oz 8. This is Oz 8. And the reason why I brought out this set in Oz 8 because the only ones, after I bought, bought these, I didn't buy any more. Any more of the, the smaller ones. I, I, I have two of these little ones, but one's polished, so it doesn't look like a stock knife. And uh, it's one I used to carry. And this one was a collector one, so it's never been tampered with, so it's totally original. The edge has never been used. The edge has never been used on this one either, nor this one, nor this one. They've just been collectors. I have other Cold Steel Counterpoint XLs. That I have carried. I have a CTS BDS, CTS BD1, BD1, yes, yeah, right. CTS BD1 uh, counterpoint that I carry a lot, and it's been all polished and fancied out. And then I have another one, a brand new one, that I've carried a few times, and it's a it's a new Oz10 one. And I polished the internals on that one, but I left it looking stock on the outside. But the internals are all polished, so it operates super smooth. But I absolutely love these knives. This one is a little bit different from the rest of these knives because other than the handle scales, which are grivery, the rest of the knife is made pretty much like they make all of their um, G10 big folders. It has a stainless steel, has, this is a four millimeter blade stock, and it has a, a, a 6061 aluminum backspacer instead of having a grivery backspacer like most of, most of the other grivery handle cold steel knives have. I think they all have grivery backspacers, all the, 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 the grivery handled ones and the Zytel ones. This is the only one that has an aluminum backspacer. And this one has a grivery backspacer also. The smaller one has a grivery backspacer. But on the big one, they made it with the aluminum backspacer. And like on my other two, I polished this piece out and it looks beautiful. I really like this knife. This is, I wish they would make it in G10 though. That's my only gripe about it because I like the Japanese Oz10 is beautiful. That's a good steel. The, the only the only thing I would only thing I would like to do if I wanted to make an improvement on it is I would make it with G10. With G10, but still have the aluminum liners. But have the G10 and the aluminum liners. And the reason why I like G10 is because I just like the way G10 feels better in my hand. This one, this one, at the, the, the counterpoints have really nice grips. That's one thing I really like about the counterpoint. It has a lot of girth to it, and so you get a good, really good grip on it. And it's a, it's a real strong knife. It feels like it's really strong and it can it handle, you know, a lot of heavy duty punishment or whatever you want to put at it. I think this, can, this knife can handle it. This would be a good knife for, I don't know, survival knife, combat knife. I don't know, whatever, whatever, you know, it could probably handle whatever you want to do with it. If it needs to be a heavy duty chore, it could be more than just a self-defense knife. I think its primary purpose is for self-defense, but I think it could do a lot of things. It has a saber ground blade. And it's real thick and durable. It's like a, it's a bayonet. It's got a bayonet blade. This one these have awesome handles. I've always liked these. I, used, I carried one of these for a long time until I moved up to like different things like the, the recons and stuff like that. But when these, when these first came out, the first one I got, the one that's all polished, I carried that one a lot. Because it's just, I don't know, it's just, I like the way it feels in my hand. Now this one too, I wish it was, I was not instead of Grivery, I wish it was um, G10. If these two had, both had G10's hand, handles, I would be carrying these still all the time. I just like I like the way that the the handles feel. They they got a good grip, 
That's one thing that's important to me. I like I just got to have a, a, knife, a knife has to have a good grip. That's why I'm not too big on this one because it's too small for my hands. I love the knife. I think the knife is made excellently. I think it's a great little knife. Super lightweight. I can't remember what weight it was. Probably, it feels like it weighs under two ounce, three ounces. Let's see what it weighs real quick. Three point five ounces. It's nice. It's a nice little knife, but the grip is not for is not for me. But other than that, I like it. This one, I really like. This one is has an excellent grip. And like I said, I'm gonna have this in my ADC drawer for a little while, <clears throat> just to check it out. And I'm gonna use the edge and wear it out. Let me sharpen it. Excellent knife. I think this is probably the best knife that you can get. These the, the Luzons, I think they're probably the best low budget knife for super low budget. When I mean super low budget, I mean like under fifty dollars. These are about well, these are like fifty dollars to eighty dollars, depending on which size you get. So these are a little bit more expensive than that. And these are like the same thing as these, as far as the prices are concerned. And sometimes this one's a little bit more expensive than this one. But then sometimes this one, you'll see, is more expensive than this one. So it goes back and forth. But uh, to me, this one is the best competitor for this one, if you want to compare them. Because I think they're both meant to be self-defense knives. I think that was the original main purpose and the thought and theory of making these knives. I just noticed that the Luzon blade's longer and it's supposed to be six inches. Let's measure the let's measure the blades. I just want to see how long they are. I just noticed that. Oh, okay. The Counterpoint XL is not a six inch blade. That's what's happening. It's more like five and five and three quarters. There's a little shy of five and three quarters. This one is probably a six inch blade. Yep, it is. It's totally, it's, it's all, all the six inch blade all day long. It's really a six inch blade. Okay. Good to know. Let, let, let's see what this one's like. This is supposed to be six inches too. This one is six inches. A little touch over six inches. Okay. Okay. I really like this one though. I think this is going to be my new favorite for the under 50 bucks because uh, I've never seen any knife that was nicer than this one as, as far as a big folder mega folder is concerned for under $50 I've never seen that before I paid 43 bucks for this and this is a monster and it's actually a good strong heavy-duty knife even though it's a liner lock when you put it in lock mode I know it's not gonna fold I know this liner locks gonna work I know it's this, this would have to actually physically probably break before it would, it would fold back on you. Now, the only other thing about liner locks, though, that I used to experience when I used to use liner locks, is that I know when they get old, lots of times these two faces that, that meet right here, where the, ta where the tang and the, and the actual liner, liner lock actually meet, meets the blade tang, sometimes that wears down. And so then you'll get a little bit of blade play. This, one's, this one doesn't have any blade play up, down, sideways, no ways. It doesn't have blade play going any, anywhere. It's a totally solid knife. I actually like this. I think this is... And the reason why I like it so much is because I've never seen any knife under 50 bucks that's this size where you get this kind of quality. And it's actually a knife that you can depend on. I would call this a knife that I would be able to depend on. 
I think it's sturdy enough and strong enough to depend on. Now as far as this blade steel is concerned, for you know using it for everyday cutting chores and stuff like that, that might be the weak side of it. Because I don't I'm not I don't know too much about this blade steel and I need to you know, have some experience with it. I need to use this knife and, and get out there and do some, have some experiences with it and, and uh, you know, do some cutting and, and use it, using, this, using this knife and see how this blade still holds up. Oz 8, the edge wears down really fast. I know that. I used to have to sharpen my Oz 8 knives all the time. I wonder if this is like that or if it might be, it might be a touch better or it might be a touch worse. That's why I'm, that's why I don't know. But this, this thing does work. This liner lock lock does work. This one's a little bit hard to get it unlocked. Okay. I think it really wedges in there. But it opens up so smooth. That's like no effort at all. Blade just flies open. Nice knife. Under 50 bucks. Go lose on. That, that's, that'd be my advice. <laughs> if you want a brand new knife under 50 bucks, go lose on. And these, I always loved this one. I used to carry this one all the time. I actually have one. The first one I had, I bought on eBay, I think it was. And it was sort of a beater. It was a used knife, and I just wanted to see if it was, what it was all about. And I got it, and I liked it. And so I sharpened up, put a nice polished edge on it, used it, and I scarred it up using it. And so I totally polished up the whole knife. It looked like a mirror. You could see yourself in it. And it had a razor, I put a razor sharp edge. That's one thing I always liked about Oz 8, it's easy to sharpen. Put a, to the, put a razor sharp edge on it, but way better than the, the original factory edge. And then my, my, my sister saw me manipulating it in my hand and stuff, and she liked it. And she wanted it. And so I gave it to my baby sister. And she's been, she's had it in her purse. She always carries it in her purse. That's her little self-defense weapon, she says. And so I, I went out and got myself another one. And I polished that one out too. Because I like the way it looked when it was polished. <laughs> this is a collector. This is one I bought from Midway. This set right here I bought from Midway. Bought them brand new. And, uh... Because most of these knives... Like I used to always, I used to always get the American Lawman and, and these knives, and knives like and and the one the original one I have of this one was a used one too, and uh, I used to like to get them used and then repair them, you know, refurbish them, and make them look better and function better than they did when they were new, and those would be the knives I would carry all the time. And that's what I used to do back in the day all the time. And I used to, it was sort of like a hobby. It was, I was doing it because I didn't have to do it. I just did it because I liked doing it. But I also bought knives to collect, too. Because I, I like collecting knives. I'm a person that likes to collect knives. And so these are the ones that, are, that I bought to collect. A lot of the ones, that, the ones I'm talking about, some of them aren't around anymore. Some, some are still around. But anyway, let's get back to this. These are great knives. This one right here is a great self-defense knife. It's, it's, it's great in any 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 hand grip or whatever, and only it's a three and a half inch blade, so it's legal everywhere. In, in California, this is legal pretty much everywhere. There's nowhere that it's not. You have to worry about the law with this one. And it's a stout little knife, and it's great for doing cutting chores. I used to always like to carry this one when I was in the garage working on my bikes or something like that. I always like to carry this because this would be good for like cutting hoses and wires and things like that. And it's, it was easy to resharpen. Even though it's a recurved blade, it's actually pretty easy to resharpen. Excellent little knife. I highly recommend these. This is the only one I ever had. I've had I've had like three or four of these. About three or four of these. This is the only one I ever had of this one. And the reason why is because it's heavy. It's heavy. It's sort of like the, the, um, the Spada XL. But this one is more carryable though than this by the XL, if you ask me. But the it weighs about the same amount as this by the XL. They're both about 14 ounces or something like that. This was see what's it this I think it's 13 and 14 ounces, something like that. More than I want to have in my pocket. This this will pull down your pants. 13.1 ounce. So it's 
hair over hair over 13 ounces but you know what the build quality on these is awesome and if you need a heavy duty big ass knife or maybe that's what you like is a big ass heavy duty knife this is an awesome blade and if you mastered this one it would be deadly as hell this would probably take off limbs kukri blades are known for taking off limbs and this is a real kukri blade it's got the real kukri shape to it 4.8 millimeter thick blade stock flat ground blade this will just slice through something devastating blade but it's heavy as hell heavy as hell but I do love it so that's the reason why I keep it because I like it a lot of things I like I don't carry but I just keep them because I think they're cool <laughs> Like I said, I just like to collect stuff. I think it's cool. And knives are the thing that I like to collect. I like to collect knives. But out of all of these, I like this. I like the counterpoints. But if I was on a budget and didn't have a whole lot of money where I couldn't afford, because the counterpoints are like almost twice as much as these. This was like thirty dollars, I think it was thirty-three dollars or something like that. And you can get these for around fifty, something like that. Normally around fifty, fifty-five dollars, something like that. And these normally go from I don't know, sometimes they have them sell midway like sixty-five dollars. And but they normally sell for like seventy-five, eighty, right around in there. So these are basically twice as much as these. And these can do everything these can do. But, I like the triad lock. I think this is a great choice for a low, low budget knife. If you don't, if, if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, I think these are a great choice. Because these, these come in Oz 10 now, which is a really nice deal. And uh, I'd rather have one of these in Oz 10. I'd rather spend twice as much and get one of these in Oz 10 as have, have one of these in the uh, Chinese steel. Now, if you want, if you want a knife for heavy duty cutting chores and, and camp type chores or whatever, go with the Rajas because the Rajas are a lot more heavy duty than either one of these. These are, these are pretty heavy duty too, though. This has a three and a half millimeter blade and this has a four millimeter blade, which are thick enough. You don't really need a blade thicker than three and a half or four and a half or four millimeters for a pocket knife because all what you're doing then is just making things really heavy. I think I think these are, you know, a four millimeter blade. That's a real stout blade. Even for a fixed blade to be a stout blade. This one right here, though, but kukris are known for having really thick blades. So this is actually a thin blade for a kukri. <laughs> but uh, this 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 is a badass blade right here, though. Even though I don't carry, it, I love it because I just know it's a badass blade. And I know whoever mastered this kind of blade masters this kind of blade. Is going to be devastating. That's right. Okay, let's let's check out the sharpness. We'll start off with this one. Uh, I, I I told you that I've noticed that this one's dull in the beginning of the the beginning of the, the the blade right here. I think so. You can put your finger in here without cutting yourself. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Is this where I was starting cutting it yesterday? I was cutting today. All right. See right in there. See it's dull right in there, and then makes it look look like it's, like it's not sharp. If you go in front of that, like right up to about a half an inch in front of it, I don't know you can see what I'm doing. It gets sharp. It's 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 not super 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 sharp. I think I think if, I think if I took a strop to it, I can make it even sharper. But I thought it was totally dull yesterday. It's not totally dull. It's not a totally dull blade. That's not what I would call totally dull. It actually cuts pretty nicely. That was a rip. And that's that one. So it cuts okay. I would say it cuts okay.
the big one. This one last night did all right. That's sharp. That's a sharp blade. Sharp all the way to the tip. From right here all the way to the tip. Boom. Sharp all the way up. That one's a sharp blade. I actually really like this one. This is a good blade to carry if you think you're going to get the knife confiscated. It's under 50 bucks and it's a real self-defense knife. It's got the size and the speed to be a good fighter. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but this would be a good fighter right here. And if he lost it or had to get rid of it or whatever, he wouldn't break the bank. That's a nice knife. I like it. And I guess the reason why I'm so surprised I liked it, because I didn't think I would like it. That's why I'm, you know, I didn't, I didn't get one when they first came out. Because I didn't want a Chinese steel knife. But you know what? That's my, that's my issue. I need to get over that. Because <laughs> for self-defense, it doesn't really matter if you have like the best type of steel. You know what I mean? Because anything with a point that doesn't break could be a weapon. Or even blunt things can be a weapon, but. But, you know, like, you don't have to have the best kind of steel to have a good self-defense weapon. I think, I think, all, I think as long as you have a good mid-grade steel, that'd be my advice. And a lot of the mid-grade steels, that might actually be better for self-defense weapons because they're not as brittle. And that's one thing you don't want in a fighting blade. You don't want a brittle blade. You don't want to get in a fight. You want to have a blade that, that breaks on you. Because it's too brittle. The steel, the hardening on it still, it's got too much of a temper on it. It's too hardened, so it's gotten brittle. You might want some more, more like a spring steel. I actually like this one. I keep looking at it. And the handle is really comfortable. It's really a comfortable handle. I think this would be good for, you know, cutting chores. and It's, it's, it's like I said, it's an all-around knife. It's, it's, to me, it's like this one. This is an all-around knife, just like just like the Voyager XLs, the Voyager XLs that I like to carry you know, all the time, the, the the larger Voyager, the Tonto one, and now they have the, the crisp one. That's a good size, and that that the, the Voyager handle is like an awesome handle, and that's the reason why it's one of my favorites, and it's you know I carry them all the time, is because I like the handle on the Voyager. It's got more of a handle that that's got a grip to it, where it grips your hand. Like that, where your hand is locked into a position and you don't have to worry about your hand sliding back and forth. And when you pull your hand out, this piece back here helps you hold on the knife. This is a good knife. This is the one that's actually in my drawer. <laughs> this one and this one. And this one. Those are my big, those are my mega folders I actually do have in my drawer that I do carry right now. I only have three mega folders in my drawer. The rest of them are all four inch blades and a couple three and a half inch blades. But anyway. Oz 8. We know Oz 8 was going to cut. Oz 8. It feels a lot like the Oz 8 just feels a hair nicer than this one, to tell you the truth. I don't know, let me, let me see something. I know about the same. I think the sharpness is about the same. Now, these are all factory edges. These, none, of these edges, none of these edges have even been stropped. They're just like straight back. Here. Whoa. That, <laughs> I love that one. That one cut like butter. I got a piece of paper over here. Look at this. 
That one really cuts. That's super sharp. Oz 8, Oz 8, when it's sharp, it's sharp. Oz 8 gets like razor blade sharp. <laughs> That's super sharp. I think the Oz 8 is a little bit nicer than the Chinese steel. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a steel expert. Uh, you know, I shouldn't even try to pretend like I am. I'm not. All I can tell you is that when this goes through the paper, it feels. It feels like the blade's just gliding through the paper. When this goes through the paper, I can feel it cutting the paper. That's the difference. This one, these two weren't super sharp. Or I think it's the way that the blade geometry is on it too, though. Because the blade geometry is a little bit steeper than this one. This one has more of, of a high flat ground uh, or high saber ground. And this one has a proper mid saber ground, like a like a you know like a bayonet blade. So it's probably thicker behind the edge. That's that's what I'm guessing. This one's flat ground, flat ground all the way to the top. And that's one reason why it probably cuts so nice. The Rajas cut the best. These were the second best, third best. But you know what? That's about how much, that's, you know, these are the cheapest, and these are next, and then these. <laughs> so but that's about how it goes, though. I would, I would, I love the counterpoints, so. though. Out of these, I would take the counterpoints. But if I had less, if I only had 50 bucks, boom. That, this would be my number one choice. I actually like this one. Really nice plate. All right, well, that's about it on those. I think we talked about them enough. Really like them though. I'm really impressed with these. This one, it's not big enough for my hand. But you know, it feels like it'd be easy to conceal. It feels like you can carry this all day and it only weighs three and a half ounces. And it's a great little knife. For 30 bucks, you know what I mean? Get a nice little nine inch knife. This one for 43 bucks is worth it all day. This is worth 43 bucks all day long. This is a deal. Deal. These, that's sexy. <laughs> I don't know, I just like Slim's bayonet blades or spear point blades. I think, I think they're just badass. But this is like a big Weehawk or or like a toothpick, like a toothpick, or it's not quite a Bowie blade, but it is a clip point. That sort of reminds me of the toothpick, Arkansas toothpick, I think it was called, from the old school days, with the blood groove. But it's sort of, sort of, sort of like a, a Filipino Weehawk. I know it's supposed to have the Filipino flavor in it. And it's supposed to be like a bamboo style handle. It's actually a very comfortable handle. Very comfortable. All right, that's all I got to say about these. Great blades. Gold still has a lot of good good choices. If you want a nice, strong, heavy duty blade for under hundred bucks, and now they got great choices for under under fifty bucks for great self defense knives. Great blades. All right, peace out. Hope everybody's up. I hope everybody's doing out there out there is doing okay with this COVID nineteen. Hope I hope everybody's not sick and I hope everybody's doing fine. Hopefully we'll have a vaccine. I I'd like to see a vaccine, but I know it's not gonna happen by the end of the year, but I wish it would. But anyway, hope everybody's doing good out there. Peace out.